there's a control tower available for sale in New Zealand. It's a unique opportunity and it's situated close to an airport, has great views of the harbour and has a long and interesting history. Today we're going to be taking a look at, well, obviously I'm in Australia right now, I can't necessarily travel there, but an old airport control tower that's now available as basically real estate. And I don't know if, if I'm the only one who does this, but I like looking at local properties and I like looking around and interesting properties. And I think, how can I make that my own? I guess that's something that we all do. We all like to have a space or whatever. And I couldn't pass the opportunity to make a video on this one. Uh, so it's going to be a little strange. This might even turn into a series. Who knows? But join me as today we explore what would happen if Ash owned a control tower in New Zealand. Now, I live in Australia, right? I live in Victoria, down here near Melbourne. And coming over to New Zealand would be a different experience altogether, although it's a fascinating one at that. We head all the way into North Island up here. We've got this sort of these two bays and these inlets. And I'll show you what I mean, because obviously being the capital of New Zealand, everything seems to be pretty central. But the International Airport here is really, really fascinating. There's a Royal New Zealand Air Force, uh, sort of say, air movement section where they do logistics and, and, and so on and so forth. And there's a whole heap of different industries that support the local uh, economy in that area. But the thing that I really wanted to take a look at today is the Wellington Old Air Traffic Control Tower. And there she is. Isn't she absolutely gorgeous? Right? We've got to call it a she because that, that's exactly what we're going to do today. But... Imagine if this was your own, right? And we'll get into some details in a second. I just want to have, have a bit of a look around and a, a bit of a geese. Obviously, I can't go there in person. I can. I'll, I will be. I'll, I'll try to. But guaranteed the property will be sold by that point in time. But just look at it. It's utterly fascinating. Now, we're going to go over to this article to start off with. Uh, and we'll go on to others in a minute. This is by Brennan Casey. It's a realestate.com. Old airport control tower now available as a house for sale in New Zealand. And obviously it goes through. We talk about the pandemic. But then this beautiful property appears right here. Look at the views from that. Utterly spectacular. Obviously here you can see the, the new tower which has replaced this thing. Apparently this, this particular control tower has been out of service for a couple of years. And the air management doesn't know exactly what to do with it. But... Imagine owning one of these, what you could do with it. And it is believed to be the only air traffic control tower in the world with a residential address and it's only had a box. So that, that in itself is a fantastic proposition. And the views are spectacular from up there. Would I pass an opportunity to get this? Probably not. Uh, but even saying that, it would make an amazing sort of content creation hub and also house for myself, obviously. Um, and to be... The stable and sort of area where you can see the whole runway, you can see over those houses, you can see over everything. The view from up there must be absolutely superb. In fact, I know a few people, uh, I posted about this on social media yesterday, and a few people are like, why don't you go get it? Well, the honest answer is I don't think I'd be able to get enough funds quick enough to beat all those developers that want to turn this into like six story, you know, housing and apartments because of its unique location between two very, very good harbours. If we go out here, we've got Evans Bay up here, and then we've got Lyle Bay down here. And any which direction you want to go, that's a surfing slash uh, or walking destination. If I come down here to sort of get an idea of what the harbour is like, well, kind of. Again, it's beautiful area. Uh, Wellington is known for being extremely windy and cold and rainy, however, but that doesn't necessarily bother me too much because I spend most of my time indoors at the moment anyway. But l let's just see. Can I even see it from the bottom here? I don't think I can because this is basically this is basically the runway right here. And it'd be fascinating to see, specifically because of its close aviation uh, link. You imagine doing this particular thing up as a as a aviation themed house, right? So we'll go over some of the pictures and things in a second, but I just want to sort of have a look around. And it, it's, it's just, it's just fascinating. Because you've got all this big land and yet there is an aircraft control tower on it. Obviously it is in a commercial zone currently, so it needs to be transferred to a residential do uh, area. The problem being is would they still allow the tower to be on the top or not? And again, uh, the real estate agent probably would provide more information about that. 
as, well, the iconic thing about it is really the fact that it's a control tower on a residential address. And I believe it's the only aircraft control tower that's on a residential address, which is quite interesting in itself because, well, you know, it's got the, the selling point is really the views from up there. Now, what I do with everything yet, uh, we'll get into that in a second. First, I want to go down sort of down to the very end of this road and we'll, we'll take a bit, bit, bit of a look. Again, if you can imagine the views like this, the views from up there must be absolutely superb when aircraft come in to land at either end. Um, and you, you can, you can see the clear result of that. That looks utterly fantastic. I mean, I'd have fun. I'd, I would have fun uh, owning a property like this. But what would I do with it? Let's go and have a look at the floor plans. So, some of the key details. The house area is 290 metres squared. The land area is 941 metres squared. It is essentially a, a large basically four floor uh, <laughs> building that is stacked up on top of each other. Now the spacing isn't too bad, although if I'm the only one that's living there, it doesn't really matter about the spacing at the, at the time. It is one bedroom, one bathroom at the current stage, but again, it was a commercial use at the moment, uh, and it probably will be a bit more interesting uh, later down the line. Obviously I could probably subdivide the property, but that's a, sub a separate subject altogether. Now, some of the features that weren't exactly noted were the fact that it's a cramped floor plan. There are narrow stairs only access to all four levels with an emergency fire escape on the rear. Uh, there's a lack of natural light in many areas and there's only one toilet. Uh, it hasn't had a lick of paint in the last decade, so we're going to have to go over paint and whatever. There is a kitchenette, 2000 uh, styling it says, and it requires asbestos removal and air... Uh, I know I said aircraft strengthening. Yeah, because aircraft are going to be crashing into it. No, earthquake strengthening. And as you can see here by the floor plan, you've got the first floor uh, and the ground floor. So this is we enter into here, and you've got this sort of big open area down here, and a bit of a storage area, and then a small little entry. I have no idea what I'd do with the ground floor, but I know what I'd do with the top floor. The top floor up here is the lounge. This is the observatory up the very top. I wouldn't call it that. It's the tower, uh, or the grand old lady, as it's affectionately nicknamed. You've then got this third floor with the balcony, so there's one entrance out the top there and you can sort of walk around. That's fascinating. I quite like that. We'll talk more about that one. The second floor here is probably what I would turn into a bedroom area, uh, possibly, although it might even be possible to have a more of a content creation focus in this particular area as, uh, as it is. First floor, again, two rooms, actually three rooms, and there's a small bathroom in there, probably turn that whole entire area into a proper bathroom rather than just have it like that. It's dependent on what the windows are, again, uh, and how much asbestos and everything else there is on, on there. Look, let's look at the 3D so you can better visualize the space here. Um, and this is fascinating. So let's get into what I do. Top floor is a lounge. Third floor would be the kitchen. This is the one with the balcony. And the reason I'd have this one as the kitchen is because it's all enclosed. It's a, it's a small space and have a kitchen dining area. It'd be fantastic for stuff because imagine cooking up there and then you take your food upstairs, you come up here and you'd sit and eat and watch the world go by. That is, that is the dream right there. Second floor, I'd a down a floor, I'd probably turn into content creation. So coming down these stairs, I'd probably turn these two spaces into some form of office work, maybe knock down the wall here. Uh, expand the bathroom to be a bit better. And then you could use that as sort of a studio space. I could use it as a, I could even turn it into a B and B or a, a place where people could come and stay. It doesn't really matter. I could always even do the same with the first floor. But the first floor, what's happening here is it's going to be turned into a bedroom. I'm going to have a study and a bedroom in there. I'd have to get people in to see what the structural integrity is like. Uh, obviously, then I'm going to have to see what noise and soundproofing is going to be like. Because being an aircraft control tower, it's not going to be particularly quiet. And there's going to be a lot of noise from the outside world. So once we get the asbestos removed, probably the plan is to probably put in soundproofing. And that'd probably help a lot. Also, some maybe ventilation or even some form of insulation. That'd be helpful specifically because it will be very, very cold in a building like this. Considering this building was built in the 50s, yeah, it's going to be absolutely freezing in there. Regardless, ground floor is going to be your open reception area. You've got a small closet entry space there just beside the stairs. You come in through this door and there's obviously a small little room here. I probably don't know what I'd turn that into, but figure that out. 
but this would be the big reception area. Essentially, this is where you'd have lounges and all sorts of areas. It's where you'd greet everyone. It's where you'd hang out for a bit. Uh, and then you'd progress to going upstairs. So, again, the first floor would be completely mine. Second floor would, again, probably be content creation uh, a derivative. Third floor would be kitchen. And the top floor, again, would be the lounge. But, again, I can see it working for several reasons. I, d I don't know why. It's just fascinating. You imagine living in one of these things. In fact, I've dreamt about living in one of these things. You could turn it into a, the most aviation centric place and i could have i don't know i thought i thought about this on the second floor could because it's all windows if you have a look at the picture up here i'm going to open this picture have a look at this so this is the second floor so you've got first floor uh this is the ground floor first floor second floor um and this is where the content creation would probably happen if i knock down the wall in the middle there Imagine I'd have a live streaming setup or some sort of content creation setup up there and I'd be able to mount GoPros up here in three different or maybe four different directions facing the runway. That way, if I'm in the middle of doing something, we could do podcasts or I can invite creators over or I could do something. I could do history talks here, could turn it into a proper studio. Uh, but the, the endless amounts of, I guess, opportunities here is fantastic. Not only to mention the fact that there's also this massive space out the back here. What do I do with that? Do I rent out these car parking slots? It looks like there is a quite a, bit, a bunch of cars up and down here. Maybe I'll, I'll rent that out. Um, other than that, you probably could subdivide the property if the local council uh, allows. Because obviously being a historical property, it's going to be subject to limitations about what I could and can't do. But yes. There you go, that's probably what I'd do. As for the exterior, as it does need a lick of paint, I'd keep it a solid white, um, and instead of having the terrible sort of, uh, the terrible sort of coloring you've got on the, on, on the tower itself, we'd make it a sharp white, repaint everything. The window sills and window frames will be black, uh, and so will everything else. So it'll look nice, but it'll look, I guess, refreshed a bit because it's all that kind of blue. It looks a bit old, a little bit dated. There's a lot to sort of look at here, a lot of equipment and so on and so forth. And the inside, from what I've seen, isn't particularly economically friendly, I, I suppose. You live in the only residential uh, aircraft control tower. I could see this being a massive sort of hub for aviation nerds to come and visit and chat about aviation. And that, to me, is the fascinating part in, in, in this whole entire thing. It is kind of a bit run down, but still, look at the amount of views you've got of the runway and of the local area. You'll be able to see anyone coming. I hope you understand what I'm trying to talk about here, because I'm waffling a bit, and I have immense amount of ideas I want to, uh, to do. <laughs> and I know that I'll probably never be able to get a, a chance at, uh, you know, <laughs> owning this, because this would be fascinating to own and obviously i'd film the experience and obviously tearing it apart and stuff you, you don't understand it's like an aviation nerd's dream come true that's that's the reality here you can own your own control tower do i have to when i have friends over do they have to radio in uh, alpha bravo three two one you know <laughs> that kind of thing I think it's cool, and I hope you've enjoyed today's video, even if it's just me waffling on about a property that I'll never be able to get to own. But um, who knows? I'm working out something, and we might be able to at least go and have a bit of a tour at the start of next year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but otherwise, my name is Ash. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.